This week on QB7, the best quarterback playoff runs ever to be seen. So this is what happens when guys did it when it mattered the most. Follow this list. It's very entertaining and inspiring. Number seven, the 2012-2013 Baltimore Ravens with Joe Flacco at the helm. 117.2 quarterback rating, 11 touchdowns to zero interception ratio, and he was the Super Bowl MVP. Now, this team was led by two great defensive leaders outside of what Joe Flacco was able to do. Ray Lewis, Ed Reed. Combine those three guys together, three premier players, you get a Super Bowl run, and that's what they got. Through four starts, Joe Flacco was amazing. Defense was able to complement the offense. The offense filled in and did what they was able to do, and to cap it off, Joe Flacco was a Super Bowl MVP. Number six, Phil Sims. I feel there's some great things in this run, but it's easy to have a run when you have a great defensive player like Lawrence Taylor. Phil Sims posted a 131.8 passer rating over three starts, eight pass TDs, zero interceptions, won the Super Bowl, and also won the Super Bowl MVP and set the Super Bowl record for the highest completion percentage in the game with 88%. These guys are doing some unbelievable things. And what's funny is I can't remember who their starting receiver was or the starting running back. I know Phil took things into his own hands, was able to make a lot of plays and put the team on his back when it really mattered the most. Phil Sims, Lawrence Taylor was able to make this run possible through three starts. Phil Sims was able to do some remarkable things in this run. Number five, Troy Aikman. Now, some will argue that it's easy to go on a run when you got the best offensive line and the best running back in football, and not to mention one of the best receivers to ever play the game in Michael Irvin. Here's what Troy Aikman was able to do with this great lineage of players that was centered around. 126.4 passer rating over three starts, eight pass touchdowns, zero interceptions through three starts and won the Super Bowl MVP. I wouldn't expect anything less when you got an offensive line that can hold up throughout any turmoil that the defensive line can propose. Troy Aikman was one of the best to ever do it, and I can see why he was a Super Bowl MVP a couple different times. Number four, Drew Brees, who I always thought was one of the best quarterbacks in the game, and some things that he had to deal with prior to him coming to New Orleans didn't sit well, which is why I know he was so motivated when he got to New Orleans. Probably not the best defense, but a good defense. But Drew was the guy who made the ship go. Here's what he did. 117 passer rating over three starts. Once again, eight touchdowns and zero interceptions in three starts. That seems to be the number that was magical. He won the Super Bowl MVP. And the Super Bowl stats, he went 32 for 39, 288 pass yards, and two TDs. We're talking about a perfect game. Drew was on top of his stuff when it mattered the most. And we talk about guys putting the team on their back. Drew was ready for this moment and ready to prove all the haters and the doubters wrong. Number three, Steve Young. Now, I know we talking about playoff runs, but Young is number three on this list because of what he did when it mattered the most. This was my boy, my favorite team. He put the team on his back and he got that monkey off his back. And here's why. Listen, nine TDs, the zero interceptions through three stars. A passer rating of 117.2 over three stars. Set the Super Bowl record for six passing touchdowns and that record still stands to this day. And tied Doug Williams' Super Bowl 22 record with four first half passing touchdowns. If you don't think Steve was on top of his game, throughout the course of this run, go back and check it out. You can always Google it and see what exactly happened because I was able to witness it. Once again, it was my favorite team and thank you, Steve, for the great memories. Number two, Nick Foles for various reasons. And for a guy to be able to step in halfway through the season, coming off the bench, it's not ideal in the National Football League. Nick took over when the team needed him the most and this is what he was able to accomplish. Nick Foles didn't have the highest passer rating but his passive rating was still over 100 at 115.7, over three starts. Six touchdowns, one interception, and he was the only quarterback on this list to throw a pick, but it didn't phase him. He won the Super Bowl MVP. His Super Bowl stats, he was 28 for 43, 373 passing yards, three touchdowns with one interception, and he also had a receiving touchdown. No quarterback on this list can say that. And the only quarterback besides Eli Manning to defeat Tom Brady in the Super Bowl. 
says a lot about Nick. This will go a long way for his legacy, and I'm pretty sure he'll eat for free in Philadelphia for the rest of his life. Number one, Joe Montana. San Francisco has always been my team. This was when I was first really getting into football and understanding what was really going on. So when I look back at my list and look at all the stats and attributes and accolades and things people was able to accomplish, you can easily say or argue that Joe Montana could be considered the GOAT. And here's why. Uh, you want stats? Here you go. 146.4 passer rating over three starts. 11 touchdowns, no interceptions. Here's his Super Bowl 24 stats though. Check them out. 22 for 29. 297 yards and five passing touchdowns. That's damn near a perfect game, however you want to look at it or consider it. Here's a guy that can be considered the greatest of all time, and if you ask me, he's definitely amongst the top of the list.